study now the call of Abraham. Call of Abraham. So call of Abraham, we have about the call of Abraham, possibly Abraham might have lived 1955 to 1780 BC. So we shall begin with a short biography about uh, Abraham. You know, Abraham was the first historical person in the Bible. Though we have the story of Adam, Eve, all that, we understand that they are all prehistorical person. And the first historical person that we have in the Bible is Abraham. And Abraham is not only just uh, a first historical person, he is also first in all senses, okay? He was the first person that we have in the uh, Bible, and he is the first person in all the sense, means he is the first patriarch. And he is the first one who experienced God. And he is the first one who was called by God to carry out his mission. And he was a nomad, going from place to place, searching for a fertile land. And possibly he had a vast, rich country. He occupied a lot of land, especially the fertile fields, and there are also a lot of flocks. And uh, he also had a wife, a family, and uh, relatives. And he was also um, a very religious man, worshipping his own gods. And it was during that time that God, God called him to be a yeah, first patriarch to carry out God's uh, call. Okay. Then we have the vocation. The vocational text we have uh, in, uh, okay. We have in Genesis, Chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. I read it for you. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go, see I have highlighted that word, go, from your country and your hindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Note go in the first verse a commandment, an imperative, go, halak, and that go is, or that imperative is fulfilled, realized in verse 4, where he went, okay, go, and he went, and right at the center, you see bless, Bless, blessing, bless, 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 five times. And the Hebrew word for blessing 
is Baraka. Baraka. So Halak, and he went, and if Abraham obeys that imperative, go, and then all these Baraka blessings will become his. And as we know, Abraham went, put into practice that halak, that imperative, and he was blessed. Okay. We shall see now. We shall see now in detail. So the call, we have already seen that passage. So as you have seen there, there are two main parts. The first, we have the divine part, divine word, God speaks. That is there in verse 1, 2, and 3. Then we have Abraham's response to God's call in verse, and it goes on till 9, but I have taken only in verse 4. That alone is sufficient. Because the command to go is answered in verse 4. Okay. And the command to go in verse 1 is followed by a series of promises. And that series of promises are given in verses 2 and 3. Now we are just having a few hmm, a preliminary observation of the text. So, you see, verse 1 to 3, God speaks, God divines word. And from 4 onwards, we have Abraham's response to God's commandment. Imperative, go, halak. So the Hebrew word for go is halak. And this halak, from this halak only comes Talak, 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 hmm? because they are all similar, uh, Aramaic, and uh, no. And then you know, this halak go is a call narrative word. We will see invariably in all the call narratives, most of the call narratives, we find this commandment to go halak. The person who is called is to be on the move. You see, Jesus lost commandment to his apostles. Go and proclaim the good news to every nook and corner of the world. Commandment to go. So that halak is followed by a series of promises which we have in verse 2 to 3. And God asked Abraham to go. And possibly, God is demanded a lot from Abraham. Why is, why is it that the demand that God put on Abraham is great? Because the God who called Abraham was unknown to him. Abraham was the first person to have such an experience. The experience of the encounter between God who calls and the person who is called. And that is the reason his call is very challenging because there was no precedence. He is the first one to experience this call of God. And then what this God is asking, he is asking him to leave everything, to give up everything, to give up all that is very dear to him, to give up all for which he has been working for so many years, his own family, his own parents, his own siblings, his own relatives, his own friends, the village, the land, his flocks, all that. View, halak, go. But where? Where should I go? God is not showing him. 
where he should go. But God is telling him, you go. And you can imagine for the ancient man to give up everything and to go alone is not that easy. See, because of the dangers and so on, they were always living together. So they were living as in the joint family, helping one another. And they had close knit, close knit relationship. And then suddenly asking, you give up everything and go must have been a very, very challenging demand from God. Now, he is asked to go. And that main word, go, halak, is accompanied by many divine promises. You know, if you go, I will give you all these blessings. And I will give you all these blessings. That main sentence or main word is subordinate to this go. Hala. If you go. So, you know, in English we have studied subordinate class and main class. I will give you blessings. And that main class is conditioned by the subordinate class if you go. So you give up everything for my sake and then I will bless you. Then I will give you all these blessings. And in that divine promise, what is central is blessing. And I, in the text, I highlighted five times Baraka is mentioned. So the Hebrew terms for uh, blessing is, the verb is baraka, hmm? barak, to bless, barak. And blessing, noun, baraka. So the promise of blessing is central for the vocation of Abraham. You obey me, you halak, you go, and I will bless you. So the word, fight word, barak, to bless, is mentioned in two verses five times, either as a verb or as a substantive. Now, what is the blessing that is given to him? Hmm? Just a few words about that. What is the blessing? The first blessing, you are going to be a great nation, great nation. And you can imagine how Abraham may have felt. See the contrast? He's already old. Abraham as well as his wife, Sarah. And they don't have children for many years. And they were barren. And the Lord is telling, I am going to make you a great nation. See the contrast. And see how you might have reacted. I don't have even one child. And the Lord is going to bless me. He's promising me that I'm going to become a great nation. And we know how he became a great father. He's a father of many nations. He was father, he's a father of Jews. He's a father of Muslims. And he's also a father of Christians. And then God says. You will become my blessing. You will become my blessing. I will bless you. You will become my blessing. And then through you, everybody will also be blessed. And again, you imagine the contrast. In those days, it was thought that someone who is barren, who doesn't have a child, is considered as a curse. And you again see the contrast. You are not a curse. You are God's blessing. I have blessed you. And also, in the Near Eastern culture, blessing, was, blessing of God was considered as very, very precious. And Baraka was understood as human prosperity or material prosperity and well-being. So, one who 
has received God's blessing is assured of all material welfare, material benefits, as well as the special care of God. In the vocation to Israel, we saw how God said, I will take care of you. I will provide you. Providence of God will be on you. And that is blessing. That is baraka. So when someone has received the baraka of God, the blessing of God, it means he is taken care of by God. God provides him. He is assured of all the material welfare, material needs. And then he will also experience, experience the special care of God. So, Maraka means human prosperity, well-being, long life, wealth, peace, good harvest, children, and then even you no know, donkeys, cattle, animals, all oh, everything is God's blessing. He is God's baraka. So you go, obey my words, and then I will give you all these blessings. And I have given some references, Genesis, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. You can mm, go through it. And God alone is the source of all good fortune. And God becomes the center of our life. God is telling Abraham, when I become the center, when you go, obey my words, I will give you everything. Good fortunes. No misfortunes. You will have the baraka. And then, the presence of God walking among his people is the highest blessing that one can enjoy. And Father Lawrence was explaining to you how Yahweh was accompanying them, how Yahweh was working with the people of Israel. Right here, with the call of Abraham, God promises this divine blessing. I will be with you. I will walk with you. My presence will be with you. And that will be the greatest baraka blessing that Abraham can enjoy in his life. So the presence of God walking among his people is the highest form of blessing. And God demonstrated his special favor for Abraham by being always by his side. And God's presence was always there with Abraham. He experienced it. And through Abraham, or Abraham becomes indirectly the benefit, benefactor of all human race. So we are all, we all, we are all blessed. We all have received the baraka because of this man's obedience, because of this man's call. And he went. And you see, the progression, progression of Baraka, in the beginning, Abraham alone is blessed. And then, Abraham's name is used as a blessing. Your name will be blessed. Then, Abraham's blessings are blessed. Whomever Abraham blesses will also be blessed. And finally, all the families on this earth are blessed because of Abraham. See the progress of Baraka. Abraham alone is blessed. His name is, is used as a blessing. Abraham's blessers, whomever Abraham blesses, are blessed. And then finally, every family finds blessing in the person of Jesus, in the person of Abraham. Sorry. And then we said that you remember yesterday, in the last class, we said about the literary form of call narratives, literary form of call narratives, where 
someone is called, a mission is given. And when the mission is given, the person hesitates. He puts forward his objections, his doubts, and all that. But in the case of Abraham, there is no time. You see the whole call narrative of Abraham? This man is simply there in silence. At the presence of the Lord, Abraham is there without any words. So a simple silence of submission to God. That is the uniqueness of Abraham. So no dialogue, no hesitation, no question. Why should I go? Where should I go? Why should I leave my parents, my siblings, my village, my attachments? Who are you to send me, to tell me nothing? No dialogue, no objection, no hesitation. A simple silence of submission to God's invitation. And that's why the later others see great faith in Abraham. And he exalted him as a hero, a hero of a living and unshakable faith. And he became the father of faith because of his total submission, surrender to the will of God. And you know, the divine command itself is the test of faith for him to give up everything and go to an unknown place. You might have thought, known devil is better than unknown angel. Possibly. But no doubt, no question, no dialogue, no hesitation, no objection. Total surrender to God's invitation. And that's the reason Abraham's obedience becomes a model for all of us. So in spite of numerous difficulties that this man, Abraham, went through, though there were a lot of difficulties in his journey, giving up all that is very close to him, to go to an unknown place, carry out a long journey, and then uh, there were a lot of tests of faith. He only become more and more strong. He begin to more and more surrender himself to God. And he consolidated and clarified his faith in the providence of God in spite of the difficulties that he had. And later we know God announces him, you, know, you will become a great nation. God announces that I will give the possession of the land. And he did not explain how it is. But he believes. So Yahweh declares in Genesis chapter 15, 5, see the heaven and count the stars. Can you count them? And then he adds, thus will be your descendants. And again imagine, a person who does not have any child, any children, he is told that you will become a father of nations. You will become a great nation. And then your descendants will be, you know, like the stars. And possibly, very difficult my have been for Abraham to believe in God's promises. Because Abraham and his wife Sarah are old and humanly they have no hope. And it is said in Genesis 15, 6, yet Abraham believes, yet Abraham believes, and the Lord does justice with him. And then when everything goes on, well, suddenly, so later he gets Isaac, and suddenly God demands you sacrifice your son. In Genesis chapter 22. And we can imagine 
how difficult it would have been. But this man doesn't ask questions. He doesn't say, hey, why? I was there without a child. And you gave me a child. And I loved him. And he's always with me. And he's so precious to me. My only child. And then suddenly you tell me to sacrifice him. To, to give the, that child back to you. What a cruel God are you? Possibly all these thoughts might have come to our mind. But this man, Abraham, without asking even one question, why, why? He completely surrendered himself to God. He is ready to sacrifice his son as God asked him. So the complete surrender of God is the characteristics of the vocation of Abraham. So we shall, we have concluded the uh, vocation of Abraham. And as usual, we shall also see some relevance. I have already written some, and then you can see this. Meanwhile, you can also write in the chat what are the new things which you have learned, okay, from the call of Abraham. So the relevance of the vocation of Abraham to our religious life. So I have written one, two, three, four, five uh, relevance implications for our life. Certainly, we can learn a lot from Abraham for our vocation, but I have given some you can also add some more in the chat. So Abraham is a model to all of us. How a person who is called should surrender himself to God, here is an example. The example of Abraham. So he is the model. He is an inspiration. He is an example for all of us who are called by God. Secondly, the commandment that Abraham was given, the command to leave the country, to leave the beloved ones, and go to an unknown destiny, still remains a reality and difficulty to many of us. You know, as missionaries, we know we have to go where our congregation wants us to go for mission. And sometimes, you know how difficult it is to leave our country, to leave our family, to leave our friends. Oh, yes. Go, go, halak. And that halak is not that easy to fulfill in our life. But this man did. Third, sometimes we say no to our transfers. We say no to the mission the congregation wants to entrust to us because of our inability to let go, our inability to leave the known place and our beloved ones. Fourthly, Sometimes we are so attached to people, we are so attached to place that we create a kind of a small kingdom where we are. So you are there in your parish or in your place for many years, five years, ten years. So you know the place, you know the people, you are there like a hero, you are there like a heroine. And suddenly you are asked to go to a new place. And we know how difficult it is. And there are some people who refuse transfer because we have already created a small kingdom. And finally, the Lord will take care of Abraham if he obeys. And that he continues to do even today with us. See, this is very important uh, for me. God promises so many things to Abraham. Baraka, Baraka after Baraka, provided he goes, 
he had lost. So once Abraham obeys to the commandment of God, God will take care of him. That will happen to us also, brothers and sisters. If we obey God, like Abraham, once we completely surrender ourselves to God, God will take care of us in our vocational journey. There are many religious who witness to this fact. They tell us, I surrender myself to God and God took care of us. And there are also some religious who are having all the times difficulties, all the times lamentations. And you go through their life, they are never faithful to their God. And that they don't experience also God's divine promise. Thank you.